Uh, we are live again. It is Consultivations, uh, the podcast. And this week we are talk talking about fake versus authentic or authentic versus fake. We'll take a look on that in a second. Before we get to that, though, I think we have to accept something, don't we? That here we are in January, February, March. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that, George, uh, I can see you working that out. George Powers is back with us from Syracuse at Powers Accounting and Consulting. Welcome, George. Thank you. Is that, um, I think that we've got to accept, even though we've started February today, it is the great way to march. Do you like that? Yeah. Uh, we also have Eric Swick with us again from Swick Business Strategies. Hi, Eric. Good morning. And we have somebody uh, back with us um, who's been busy acquiring businesses all over the world. <laughs> The magnificent Vince Howard. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, Dave. Now, um, this whole idea that Feb is the great way to march, I, it's mathematics for me. You've got four weeks in a straight line, one, two, three, four. And then all of a sudden, a weekend hits and we're in March. So I think if we time our rhythm and cadence wrong as business owners this month, you could get caught out of it, I think, going into what is March, which will finish the first quarter of the year already. So, uh, Eric, what do you think about that? I don't want to rush things. You know, life is moving way too fast. I want to I want to enjoy February. It happens to be the month of my birth. So I like to celebrate the month of February. Well, we, we should all slow down and be in the moment then, Eric. Um, okay. Just just for you, my friend. <laughs> Vince, what do you think about making sure February is in the right spirit, moving towards a march? So to help Eric... I'm going to slow down. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just seems like the years are flying by. And I, I do agree with that comment. 2020 yeah. was, you know, March of 2020 lasted forever. Yes. But the rest of 2020 went by really quickly. Yeah. Yep. It did. It's, it's really funny. I was, I was I was talking to a lady last night, uh, a friend of Kevin Turnbull's, about RLC Consult, and I, you had to stop for a second and go. Remember last year when we did the, and suddenly realised it was 2019. Yes. Yes. So there's an aggregate of 2020 that has distorted both sides of it, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Where things you just still assume were last year. So. Let's let's get straight into business. We want to talk about fake or authentic or, or authentic. First of all, if you had to choose your favorite one of these words, so as in fake or authentic, which side would you lean to? Uh, let's go to Vince first. Oh, definitely authentic. Hate fake. Uh, why? Just. I'm one of these people that likes to trust people on that, you know, on that first go round. Yeah. Uh, and when I find someone that's fake or I find someone that uh, uh, doesn't uphold their, or what I, I should say, what I think is my moral compass uh, to me, that's just not a person I want to associate with and not someone I want to be around. I, I, I like the way you framed it, as in it's, it's like your perspective, and, and that, therefore it's not wrong, it's not right, it's a personal take on it. George, what do you think, authentic or fake? I think everybody's going to say you, you like the idea of authentic unless you're fakely saying you like to be authentic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But uh, I, I, I like to be authentic because I'm not smart enough to remember a bunch of lies by being fake. So I just... Uh, it's too it's too hard to to be fake in my opinion. So just be be what it is and what you are. So uh, and and I agree with Vince also. Is I, I in the past have dealt with people to tell you something up front. And you find later on that they're not being completely forthright with you, or at least not the way you view it. And it's hard to do business with them again because you just you never know when the other shoe's going to drop. So. Um, on the other hand, sometimes don't, people don't even always know when they're being fake. They they think they are they're being authentic when they're actually not, which is a little bit more of an interesting wrinkle. It it, it is, isn't it? But I, I guess if we just change the net for a minute, Eric, we'll go to Eric with this question. So, Eric, have you seen the Matrix, the movie? Oh yeah, all of them. I love them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. It's quite funny, right? Debbie said I'd never watched those. I mean, one weekend we actually watched them with Maximilian. Then she. 
She forgot she'd seen any of them. And then watched the first one again and said, do you know what? That's a pretty good film, isn't it? Um, how much do you think of society's construct around the world is potentially fake? There's definitely a potential. I mean, I want to go back, though, for your first question and say, I know it's a trick, so I guess I should go with fake, knowing knowing Dave and his, his approach. <laughs> but um, I think you can be authentic and be fake because you're authentic maybe to something that is really not who you are. Um, so I, I don't know. I I, I think I, I like I agree with Vince and the, the definition of authentic. I think of authentic as being real. And uh, yeah, I like I prefer being around people that are real. Who so, they are. And I love that. A really important part of real leadership coaching, really, isn't it? It's that real word. So well, Kevin, we're talking about fake or authentic. We've just been talking about February being the great way to march, if you're listening. Um, and this whole thing about fake or authentic, right? and, I, and I think there's two parts of fake I want to deal with in a second. But how many times have you met people who talk a lot about authenticity being important to them, and then you find that they're malleable, right? And suddenly they're changing their spots every time the weather changes, right? Who, who's met people like that? Yeah. I think we all have. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and, and then next up, who's led people who want to be authentic and find themselves always attempting to be a version to meet your expectations? So I guess that leads me to my next question, Eric, right? Is yeah. how as leaders today do we help people not to do that? And um, we'll, we'll go, go around the room for some tips. Um, Kevin informed me reliably, if you're listening, that he had to get a hobnob for breakfast. And that was a vital expedition, wasn't it? It's was a very authentic expedition, wasn't it, Kevin? Look, look, there is the evidence. Hi, Debbie. Mom. Hey, Debbie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Debbie. So um, now we, we have. Um, we'll come back. We'll come straight to that leadership question in a second. I also think authenticity has been a guilty buzzword in business for some time. Why would I say that, George? Uh, I guess because uh, a lot of corporate America talks about it, but they really, it's more words than it is real. Um, I think, gen and I, I, I say corporate America, but probably corporations in general, they, they, they talk a authentic game, but in the reality, you are always looking for where the other side is. You never can quite trust what they say because there's always something seems to be behind you know the scenes that they're playing with so it just seems like there's they don't give you straight answers most of the time so i guess that would be my thought on it that's a, that's a very good answer so vince we're coming to you how, how do you help your team you've got quite a large team how do you help them stay more authentic what kind of things do you you maybe do you know as you were talking i was kind of thinking about this i i i don't know what we i mean I, i'm trying to put my head around what we do specifically um, to lead them, but I think more importantly is they're going to be the first ones to identify whether we're fake or authentic. So if our mouth is saying one thing, but our hands are doing something different, you know, I believe it's going to be easier to fool your client base than it is to fool your employees who are with you 20, not quite 24 seven, but 24 seven. So for them, I think we have to practice what we preach. I mean, if we say we're going to do X, we've got to do X and they have to see that we as leaders are living proof that, that, you know, we're upholding what we say is important, what we value or, or what our, you know, what we're built on. Yeah, good you know, Dave, The last two weeks, we talked about the seven leadership skills or uh, tools. And number one was, you know, really about being authentic, right? It says a leader, you should demonstrate the behavior that you want from your organization. So to answer your question, I think, you know, you, you have to act and, you know, lead the way you want others to act and lead within your organization. You're absolutely right, Eric. And it, and that rule just gets timeless as time goes on. It just, it's, 
you could I think you can apply that rule in a hundred years' time. Um and I know George will be around for that. But um <laughs> right, Kevin, what do you, what do you think about this whole thing? And we are talking about remember authentic or fake, but how how in your experience in all those great jobs you've done in your lifetime as well as the, the coach you are today uh, which you're incredible at that what what's what's your view about how do we help people be you know more authentic and less you know to your face pleasing right well I, i've always had a little bit of a problem with authentic as a word um one of my, one of my friends used it at the back end of last year and said you know 2021 is the year when I'm going to be more authentic. And I said, oh, you're just going to be selfish then. <laughs> and I think that's the trap a lot of people walk into. And it's very much, um, it resonates with culture to me. Um, as Vince says, if, you, if you're not serious about it and you don't walk the, walk the walk and talk the talk, you can say as much as you like about being authentic, but you're not, you're being fake. So living up to the ideal of it is absolutely essential. And and would you say then, uh, one of the things we learned with the leadership rule was, if, if you are really bad at something, you're better off acknowledging that you're really bad at something versus telling everybody else to be better at what you're crap at. Would, would you agree? Unless you're a crap at it, you need them to be better than you at it. <laughs> That, that, Which is sometimes what we hire for. I'm crap at this, that, so I'm hiring you. You're better at it. That, it's that. It's a good point, but it's that double standard, isn't it? So, what what do you do then, Vince? We're going to come back to Vince again, uh, as you know, uh, optimizing your presence, Vince. Right. So, you decide to hardwire a new belief system, Vince, into your life, and it's going to be fake for a while. How would you lead with that? What would you do to let people know? Well, first thing, kind of bouncing off of George on this, I'm going to somewhat embrace failure or hire someone to help me with the areas that I'm weak. But if I'm leading other people, I want them to know that it's okay to fail and it's okay to see me fail as long as we learn from it and move forward and stick to you know, what our plan was and not deviate. Yeah, I think I think that's 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 really good business advice, isn't it? About hiring specifically the resources you might not might not have. Kevin, do you think it's important to mark out, you know, newness with something? So you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm going to overcome blank, whatever blank is. Um, but nobody believes you. Is it? Do you think it's important to tell them or not? Uh, well, I think diplomatically, it can be, it should be essential. Um, you know, all the all the bad leaders that I have um, that I have um, had the misfortune to work with, they've always said they're authentic and they always talked about their strengths when and wouldn't recognise the weaknesses. Um, yeah. And you know, it's a it's a it's one of the old adages of of leadership that you surround yourself by good people, even if they're better than you. In fact, they should be better than you. In, in many instances, that's being authentic because you're being honest. Yeah. Totally. And, and I think that's why I, I have to say I hugely agree with you around authenticity as a, as, a, as a buzzword, as a badge, as something you talk about, almost should be something somebody says about you afterwards rather than an upfront comment. You know, go, go ahead, Vince. Dave, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to ask, ask uh, Kevin a question on that. So most of us know what our strengths and weaknesses are. And I think sometimes we spend time, I don't want to say bragging, but, but resting on the laurels of our strengths instead of working on improving our weaknesses. And is that what you've seen kind of historically with your people is that they don't want to admit that weakness or they they view that that weakness or maybe that public display as a weakness as not being a strong leader. Yes, absolutely, uh, Vince. Um, typically, typically, a leader like that will big up the strengths. You know, they'll, 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 they'll inflate them to be over important and they'll kind of ignore the weaknesses and give them less relevance 
I, it doesn't matter that I'm not very good at that, you know, because it's not that important. And, 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 and so people kind of distort their, their own way of thinking in order to support their position as a, in their own mind as a leader. Should we, you know, if you go back to the bell curve, so they're spending 80% of their time on their strengths, which are already their strengths, shouldn't they flip that and spend 80% of the time improving their weakness because their strength is going to continue to be a strength? Yes. Yeah. It, you know, it takes a strong leader to do that, but but your rationale and reasoning is absolutely sound. I, I, I would take an opposing thought to that in the idea that your weakness will never be your strength because it is naturally your weakness. You will never be able to make a strength out of it. So if you go to your strength and hire somebody else whose their strength is your weakness, it allows you to be more productive and better in the end. And yes, as, as leaders, I think we have to be our okay. I was reading a quote the other day is, you know, go out and be, you know, embrace your okayness. You know, we're not perfect. We're not going to be great at some things, uh, and that's okay. Hire somebody or put somebody on your team that is that that is their strength. That that's just natural for them, because mm -hmm. if we focus all our time on making our weaknesses strong, we're going to not be able to. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to excel in any way, because we're just going to be spending a lot of time in areas that we're never going to be natural at. That's good point. Good point. But I think there's two actions there, isn't there? There's one, that can you hire your weakness at a very high standard? And then there's also, what do I do if I can't do that? Actually, i got to put my 80% effort into addressing this, right? Because it might be the small bit that you've got to overcome to get to the next level. So I think both those actions can be applied in different contexts, can't they, Vincent, George? Sure. Uh, depending on your circumstances. But let's pick out something else you did say. Um, Eric just sent me this message as the oracle today. He said, uh, don't merely know thyself, be thyself. Can you imagine that working, Eric, for a company that wants you to be like that? I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I think that's where you get that fakeness is when people think I have to be a certain way. You know, the, the person that comes to my mind, because I've read his autobiography a couple of times, Steve Jobs. I mean, he would get up on stage in a major public appearance and he'd be wearing a pair of jeans and a black t shirt. He didn't yeah. care what people thought. You know, he didn't have to play the role of a CEO. He was being himself. And uh, he was, a, you know, he was very successful at what he did. And I, I think of there's a lot of new leaders out there that are like that. Um, but unfortunately, we have a lot of old historical leaders that we look to. And uh, I, I think that's part of the problem. I was, I was talking to George today about um, the, this thing that we still have, right, which is despite what's gone on with COVID, home working, big companies still wanting people to come back to the office. Mm. Right? I know this context, large companies wanting people to come back to the office. And I was talking about that so many millions of people have learned the balance of life. So a four-hour commute every day is a costable thing, isn't it? Yeah. So if you say to me, George, Dave, I want you to come into New York State every day and work in the office, and it's a two-hour commute for me, I now know I can weigh that up and work anywhere. So, so we've got to be authentic with not applying old paradigms to, haven't we, to new way thinking that we've been all forced to learn. Which actually, by the way, any CEO of a massive, massive, you know, huge corporation who thinks they've got the say over somebody choosing time with their family like that and working differently has probably missed the lesson that's been on offer in the last year. So there's, there's, there's a beat missing there too. So question to Vince and to Kevin. This one's a belter. Kevin, I think you'll love it. Is Should authenticity be replaced by the word congruency instead then? Define congruency for us all in your own mind. It's congruency is where your external behavior matches what you communicate and what you say on the inside. Congruency is I, you know, I believe in something 
what I, you know, even religiously, and my behaviour matches my what I've told you. You know, you know, you're not watching me. You know, years ago in Britain, Kevin, how often was it? And we're not saying this is wrong. You'd have a vicar in Britain or a reverend in Britain down the pub on a Saturday. You know, Sunday morning, he's asking you to live better. You know, <laughs> is that congruent? Maybe not. Maybe it is. You decide, right? So someone's saying to you they're really, you know, holy. And on the supermarket, you see them and you've taken their car space and they jump out the car door going, who do you think you are parking here, George Powers? Yeah. Right? Is that congruent? Possibly not. Yeah. Well, what you just said about large corporations, I mean, they talk about our people are most important to us, but then they're saying we want you all to come back to the office. I mean, not congruency there. Yeah. So we're looking at this fake and authentic, and now we're looking at challenging the word authentic altogether. Because Kevin, I like what you said earlier. I, I do think it's a word we could ditch because it really should be. I just spent time with Vince and it was, you know, I loved how authentic his people were. It should be an after the event commentary rather than an in the moment description. Vince, what do you think about congruency now that we defined it a bit? I think I like it maybe a little better than authenticity, but I don't know if it's the exact replacement for it. Yeah. But congruency, consistency, uh, to me, that's the, you know, doing what you say you're going to do, um, trying to find that one word to, to, to bundle all that a little difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, chal it's challenging, isn't it? So, because I, I think, I think authenticity is an internal decision. It would be my conclusion. It's, I think it can be we can take to an extreme, it can be dangerous. Um, I, I was thinking of a comment there that think about true authenticity can be obnoxious. Think about you, someone walks into the office, man, you look like crap today. You, you're being authentic, they look like crap, but is that a great way to start the day? Um, and, and I think that with any of these things come, come nuances in them. What, I think what you're really trying to get at is uh, from a leadership perspective is you know, are, are, is a leader being true to things that they say they value? I'm not sure if authenticity or congruency actually does justice to the larger whole of where you're trying to, to go with that. That's a really being, good one. Being authentic, Dave, I, 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 being authentic for a minute, I, <laughs> I do have a slight problem with, with replacing one long word with another long word. <laughs> Kevin, that is very real of you. <laughs> I thought so. So let, let's I've ask come, you. I've come to the end of my hobnob, so I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> you're, absolutely, you're absolutely finished. Now the question is, um, let's deal with fakeness, because I think there is, a, there is a truism that fakeness can exist, um, and it can exist for multiples of reasons, I think. That is, when something is still feels alien to you, you know when you're learning something new, and, um, and let's say whatever it is, it could be a skill with a client experience, it could be software technology, it could be things you're trying to say less of to say more of other better things. It can seem fake initially um, because it's still not reflex or it's still not habit. H how do we um, balance that out, do you think? Oh. That's something you hear around our office almost every single day. Embrace change. Yeah, that's good. Um, I, I don't think that it's, Dave, I don't think just because it's alien or new, it's fake. I think it's that it goes against most personality types yeah. of they don't like change and therefore it's uncomfortable. And they need to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's tough to do. Yeah. How do you fare against that, Vince? Oh, are you kidding? I'm the uh, agent of disruption and change in my office. So most of my team would uh, rather put me outside in front of oncoming traffic most days <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> you know, they're – they're all non-changed, non, you know, non, or they're change adverse. But uh, you know, for the for the progression and forward movement, 
I'm a necessary evil. And, and so they know that they know they have to embrace it, but it is still tough for them. No, I agree. Uh, I agree with, I agree with that Vince, because um, I, I actually think change management is the hardest thing that a manager can do. And most people don't do it because they avoid it. I once ran a company in the UK where we realized that we'd actually got the business model wrong. And so we stripped it down and rebuilt it. And a consequence was we sacked half the staff and rehired a different skill set. But my directors wanted to rebuild it the way it was. It was obvious to me. So I got rid of them all because they didn't embrace the change of the environment and the strategic requirement to match our company to it. So change management is really tough. Now, just to bring you up to speed, I think Tick Vince has just uh, had been taken out by his team. Uh, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> We're just waiting for an update. Hold on a second. We're getting a message coming in. He, he, oh, was, no. changing, he was messing with the yeah. staff and they took him out. Huh? <laughs> it was just his camera. Was it just your camera, Vince? <laughs> so, Ke I, you know, I think, Kevin, you're, you're, you're right there in that most – people don't like change and most people don't think outside the box. Accountants have a great acronym called SALLY, S-A-L-Y, same as last year. And I believe that a lot of times our management and our, our thought process is all based on that acronym. Well, why change it? You know, this is what we did last year. This is what we did last week. This is what we've done for the last 10 years. Yeah. Why do we need to be different? But, you know, our thought process a little, or my thought process, if we're doing the same thing as I did three minutes ago, that means there's room for improvement. So we, you know, we've got to tear down the walls and rebuild. And so George, as you said earlier, find those people to hire that, you know, your weekend. Yeah. I get the, you know, I get the people that aren't afraid to tell me no on my team uh -huh. that, you know, we can't do this or we can't do this now. It's, it's a great message that you can have the ability to have those conversations. And actually, and then it's okay in the same way for somebody to be able to say, I'm feeling really uncomfortable about this, but I'm going to actually give it my best attention because I've become comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, you might have seen this flash up from last week that the easy way to overcome insanity, which is that Sally comment that we just heard, is to just do something different. Uh, and speed the whole darn process up. A, a top salesperson I know once said, you're either growing or you're eroding. One or the other. And if you sat in the middle, you're dying. Mm -hmm. So it's a real change mindset, isn't it? Uh, I'm of the belief, uh, here's an authentic point, Kevin, but I'm going to cut the word down. Kevin, here's a real point. With absolute sincerity, George, no laughter. <laughs> is that the death of change has changed itself. So one of the secrets to helping people through this is to not talk about the change. It's just to stimulate it, celebrate the evolution, you know, look back at things that they didn't notice that they've already done and allow us to become together more used to progress. And you'll notice people talk differently, just as a, as a small point. So we're going to spend the last couple of minutes um, just talking about um, authentic, authenticity versus fake. So we've talked about lots of different versions of it. We're not going to have any big words to replace big words. That's an agreement, Kevin. Uh, okay. Uh, so I want to ask you one more time. Are you still going with your original choice, authenticity over fakeness or fakeness over authenticity? George. Oh, still definitely authenticity over fake. I think that's that's easy. I just I'm not sure if we can put everybody in those far extremes. I think it's much more shades of gray. And that's a different episode we'll get to next time round. Thanks, George. There's 50 of those. He told me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, George Powers, for that update. And uh, that's not what you meant, was it, George? What's that? That's not what you meant, was it? No. Oh, no. I didn't think about that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It took me a minute to get back to that one, Dave. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> uh, we, did put a, we did put a blog out today uh, which talks about um, dealing with this. It's also a chapter in my book from 2017, Leadership or Leader Blank, Unicide. Um, I do think, though, 
Uh, Vince, that's a really great shout. Uh, do you want to, while I put this up, do you want to talk about the, the, the message you just sent me? Yeah, I told Dave, so to kind of further expand on something George said earlier, where authenticity sometimes can be cruel, right? Isn't really authenticity more of a be real, be kind scenario? So be yourself, be real, but you know, you do have to reel it in a little and you do have to take into consideration other people's feelings. Yeah. Totally. I, I remember one of the best leaders I ever saw working would fire you wonderfully, you know, really nicely said, skillfully done. And I watched loads of people at director level getting dismissed who at the end of the meeting would say, listen, I really appreciate all you've done for me today. Let's not let's not break any bones yet. They were fired, and they were saying, "I really thank you for everything you've done." And what they're really talking about, though, Vince, is what you just described, isn't it? It was done in a good way, and people, I think, respect that, don't they, Kevin? Would you agree? I, I, I do. I mean, fake and authentic is very interesting in the in the world that we live in, is, isn't yeah. it? Um, uh, and, and in particular, not bringing politics into the conversation, but Trump kind of went down a fake a, a fakeness to drive a particular agenda. So he used it, you know, his denial of anything he didn't like, he used it as a change agent, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure, I'm, I don't know if it's right, I'm, not, I'm sure it's not right, but it was partly successful. It was. And if he'd been a better yeah. operator, you know, who knows? You're absolutely right, Kevin, because you can use anything that's wired for good or anything that's wired for bad in both sides of the equation. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, you, if you've ever heard the quote by John Maxwell, leadership is influence, how many leaders do you know in large companies also lead through divisiveness successfully? Yeah. And everybody is playing off everybody. And the only person who's watching is the architect, the person who started it, watching it all unfold in a predictable way. Look, Eric, we're back at the matrix again. So final comment from anybody about your best personal tip for authenticity to wrap up this week's episode. And we're going to go to Vince Last, who's just sent me another message saying he's got an absolute corker to share. So, Eric, Eric, sir, is there is there a final tip about authenticity from your own perspective? Yeah, I was actually thinking about fake, so I was going to touch that on that myself because I have a client I'm working with right now, and he realizes that he can be sometimes difficult and hard driving in his organization. And so, you know, part of what he may need to be is be fake because it's not really his true personality to be real and be kind. And so, you know, he may have to change how he acts and behaves. Um, it may not be authentic to his natural style. And so I think there's where fake makes sense. That is a bombshell right at the end. And it's true because it's a new behavior. Yeah. And therefore, the, the great advice in that situation is to declare it, be candid about it. You know, sure. this is new. So the person who's going, this doesn't feel right, is they, they probably should feel like that because it's new. Yeah. So, yeah, great, great example. Let's go to Mr. Powers in Syracuse, a place everyone needs to visit one day. George, a final point from you. Except today because it's snowing really hard. But I guess in the final point, I guess I would I would quote somebody that wrote a couple things and said, that, to thine own self be true, because then you can be you cannot be false to any man. That was that was Hamlet. <laughs> so that was very good. I quite like the way you introduced it there by somebody who wrote a few things. That could have been <laughs> yeah, very nice. Mr. Turnbull, uh, you've consumed your hobnob. You've uh, chucked in a few great stuff today. Any final thought from you, sir? Well, well yes. I, 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 using the analogy of hobnobs as a trigger for authenticity, I'm not sure personally that I can be more authentic going forward because I've lost an authentic crutch. And that is my source of Branston pickle has shut. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. So I might be going into the land of fakeness for a while while I try and sort that out. <laughs> it's a personal <laughs> dilemma, yeah. but an authentic listen, one. Listen, you're going to have to console yourself with exported tonics or something, Kevin. 
Tonics. <laughs> well, I wish. I wish. I will have to. We'll have to send you some. Well, uh, well, that, food packages are gratefully received in starving California. <laughs> okay, we're all over it. So uh, we have been waiting for this belter from uh, the man who can. So Vince, any any final words from you, sir? You're killing me, Dave. You're setting this up, and my my brain is just smoking. But I think at the end of the day, we are who we are, right? We we it's very difficult to change our internal yeah. our internal nature. I think what what's the common? A tiger doesn't change its stripes, or a leopard doesn't change its spots. But if we know that we are a certain, you know, call it authentic or real. And we want our team to be authentic and real. I think we also need to understand that those realnesses sometimes come from different angles. And yep. so we need to be able to accept as leaders that, you know, we may look at them as fake for either trying to follow us blindly or because they are opposing us, but it's just a different angle or a different vision. I think it's a, it's a really good perspective, Vince. Um, wise, because, wise words, yeah. Very wise indeed. And it, it gives us all something to make sure we're getting right as we come out of this episode. And what we're asking you all to remember today, it's not one or the other, but it's appreciating that in leadership, fakeness can exist, like Eric said. Authenticity is a preference. But if you can create an environment, and you've all heard it, I think it was Margaret Mead who originally said it, create an environment where people can and choose to flourish. That's going to only be built on by people knowing they can be themselves when they come along to the, to, you know, to the workplace. But here's the only caveat to anybody working for somebody. Authenticity is not an excuse for not using skill. And on that bombshell, this has been Consultivation. We can't wait to get back together next time to talk about even more with even more faces of leadership with some, again, tremendous people. Vince Howard in Florida and loads of other places, thank you for your time. Thanks, Dave. Kevin Turnbull, we will be on the Branston Pickle mission soon, I've no doubt, Kevin, but thanks for your time. It's been a pleasure. And George, the only man from Syracuse live on this podcast, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me, Dave. And our strategist, Swick, Mr. Swick himself, Thanks for being with us once again, Eric. All right. Thanks, Dave.